when George was born, um, he was, for all accounts, healthy and normal and beautiful baby boy. Around five months or so, Lindsay started to get the sense that something wasn't quite right with George. Uh, Lindsay then said, you know what, um, for my peace of mind, I'm going to take him to the stall I'm going to get him checked out. I'm sure it's nothing though, don't bother taking any time off work. And then I got a call around three o'clock or so and nope, something's definitely wrong with George, you got to get here right away. Once we got admitted, we really didn't know anything about his diagnosis, being told he had dilated cardiomyopathy, that he's in the heart ward. I mean, you're getting a wave of medical terms, a wave of medical information, and we had four or five doctors come in, as well as nurses and the rest of it, and the amount of excitement almost from the medical side was overwhelming for a parent. I do remember we asked the question, is he gonna be okay? And the answer is like, we don't know yet. And, and you never expect that answer, so that part was really hard. And then getting the diagnosis and trying to understand that while you're getting the news that there might not be a favorable outcome is really hard. His heart had gotten so large that it collapsed his left bronchus and then collapsed his left lung. So that's when they said the sooner we list him, the better for a heart. Once you're listed and they tell you that you, you know they kind of make that decision, they go and do a bunch of checks and say, "Yep, you're you're good to list." I I, I think the staff at the salary did a tremendous job. Each one of them was uh, such a, an important member of being able to talk to. We were spending 24/7 there for months on end, so. They really were such a support to us all the time. I know uh, many of the nurses would just talk about life and talk about George and be that reassuring voice or, you know, saying what they've seen before and it, it meant the world. And we were home about a month until uh, we finally got the call that there was a heart for him. For me, getting that call was scary because now everything's real. It was his first surgery. It was the first time he was getting any surgery. We were a wreck. There's not really much that can be stayed. You wait and hope and pray and whatever you can. We made the decision for Lindsay to take him in and hold him. Um, it was very scary. Lindsay talks about the, the surgical room all the time and she'll remember forever, I'm sure, what that room looked like and the number of clamps and knives and the table and the way it looked. And For me as well, just um, when you have to sedate your child, you feel him go limp. You trust him into the care of others. And, out of fear. I think it's hard being a dad and being in the hospital. You always do have that wanting to provide and worry about the stuff outside of the hospital so that, at least in our case, that mom can focus on George and doesn't have anything else to deal with as she's there day in, day out as well, sleeping by his side. And as a dad, you try to do absolutely everything within your power. And I think every kind of family, mom and dad are going through that while they're in the hospital. The mental health resources for um, the adults or the caregivers in a pediatric ward, I definitely think that's an area of focus um, that the hospital could always use more resources and more support because it is PTSD for the parents and you can see it to the parents that are in there, whether they've been in a, an ICU or a NICU or on the ward, when you're dealing with a sick kid and the kind of stress that can, can bring on to the family or if there's other financial challenges or things like that, it's uh, an area of where more resources are definitely needed. You ready? George, since his transplant, has been amazing. It's incredible how quickly he had more energy. Um, he's a normal kid in every pretty much way you can imagine. He runs, he plays with his dogs, he loves trains. It, it's a tremendous change. After things kind of steadied and George had his transplant and we got out of the hospital world and, and things were a lot more normal, uh, Lindsay and I both felt like we wanted to give back in different ways. For myself, I ended up volunteering back at the Stollery through um, a group peer support that um, gives them someone to talk to that's been there, that gives them that, that family, that parent perspective of what that's like and, and what did it feel like for them. We got so much from the Stollery in terms of the care that we received and George's outcome being so good and how well he's doing. I just wanted to do something to kind of pay it forward to the next families that are coming in.